Hello, Nerdy Romantics. We are here with guest host Jen and Leslie, a new guest host for us. And we are going to talk about some great summer romances. Now, these may be some that we might have read and we want to reread them. They may be some that we want to read book two of. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Yes, I do have a book two coming out. And they may be some that are just plain new to us coming out this summer. So get out your pens, your, any kind of e-readers you've got going on. Get ready to mark all of these, put all of these on your to be read list. This is the Nerdy Romantics Podcast, and I'm your host, Y.M. Nelson. I'm so excited, y'all, about this list because I am in full-on summer romance read mode. It doesn't help that it's like 70 degrees outside at this point, (laughs) Uh, but I'm really excited to just get a book and just do a beach read by the pool, whatever, just outside having a good time. First off, We are going to introduce Leslie from She Reads Romance. And Leslie, tell us a little bit about yourself and about that wonderful podcast you've got going out there. So yeah, tell us. Thanks so much for having me today. Yes, I am sort of the creator and writer over at SheReadsRomanceBooks.com where I help romance book lovers find the best books reading worth reading in the genre. And I do that through my book list, through reviews, my fun book quizzes, the She Reads Romance Books podcast, and now the She Reads Romance Books book club. Ooh, I like the book club idea. Is the book club virtual? In other words, can we It is virtual. I would love for you to join because I really... I have interacted with various readers, people who repl- or write into me and say, oh my gosh, I love your list, or we have the same like reading vibes and whatnot. But this year I really wanted to, or felt like I had the space to develop sort of a community because I want to connect with my people, right? And I want to be able to talk yeah. shop about books that we love, which we're going to do virtually every month, read a book and talk about it on the book club. But then also a great part about the book club is that During that month, we're also going to get back together virtually and talk to the author who wrote the book. So it's an awesome way to connect with authors that, you know, readers love and ask them their questions. And I put together a discussion guide and all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, it's it's going to be great. And part of the book club too is I do author interviews and different interviews on my podcast too. And then I always do an extended interview with them. And so people in the book club can watch the interview by video and get that extended extra too, which is cool. I like it. I like it a lot. And y'all know that I will have all of the details in the show notes. So everybody can join the book club that wants to join the book club. And tune into the podcast, everything that you have going on. I just, I love it all. I love it all here. That's so cool. Jen, how's it going out there? Oh my gosh, things are great. How you doing, honey? Oh, doing really well. For those who have just tuned in to this podcast, you just found us, because I know we just started putting ourselves out there on YouTube, so you might have just found us. Jen, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I am a creativity coach. I've been working with romance authors for about nine years and I help them with their books, their business and their, and their mindset. So I do a lot of coaching and some editing on the site. And she's good (laughs) y'all. Especially with the coaching part, which I always need. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk, babe. Yes. 
So let's get into these wonderful books that we are recommending. And Leslie, how about start us off with your list of summer romance reads that you're dying to get right. into? I have a pen. Yes, get read ready. List. I right. think this is really <laughs> going to be a great summer of romance books. Like I was actually putting together my list to put up on the blog today. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really hard to narrow them down because there are so many really great ones coming out. The first one that I thought I'd talk about is by an indie author, Liz Tomford. The book coming out is Play Along on July 11th. So her, this is part of her Windy City series. This is book four, but all of her books can be read as standalones. It's been really, it's a really popular sports romance um, series. She has, the first one was a hockey player. Second one was a basketball player. Third one was a baseball player. And this fourth one is also a baseball player, a brother of the hero from book three. So Isaiah is the hero. He is a shortstop and just a, like hysterical guy because you kind of already met him in the other book. But this book is about him taking a trip with the team to Vegas and waking up one morning realizing that he got married overnight to Kennedy, the physical therapist trainer to his baseball team who he's always had a crush on. But she had been engaged, but recently broke that off. And so now they wake up married. <laughs> sounds pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. I that love that. Sounds wild. And another twist I love here, that I think, married is that out. she has a stepbrother who is also a professional baseball player who's kind of like the nemesis to Isaiah. So you've got that sort of like angle going on to the story. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those oh, who, yeah, for those who are new to Liz's books, what's the, what's the heat level on those? She can get pretty spicy. Not going to lie. Like she's got, she has several scenes, you know, that can get pretty steamy. So I would say it's up there, probably like three or four chili peppers, we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. What What is your, do you have a, a range there on your, on your list of a steam level there? What's the hottest? We'll is, it five? Five. Yeah. is it five? Yeah. We'll, we'll go like, okay. you know, no peppers to five peppers is probably how I would do it. It's hard though, right? I mean, okay. it's so subjective to say like, yes. what does one person think is steamy versus another? But yes. she's definitely open door romance. I'm sure there's going to be a few steamy scenes in there. So, yeah, this is this is the pick awesome. for somebody who wants a little steam with a little, you know, baseball summer's pastime, right, games. So this would be my pick for if you like a little baseball and if you want a little steam. Yeah, I like Love it. That. So what's next on your list? So speaking of steam, this one is very low steam. I would say not even really a chili pepper. There's a kiss in it. So, cause this book I want to talk about is the rom commers by Catherine center it comes out June 11th and she's pretty well known for her closed door romance books. And so that's definitely what this one is. So I've already read the book. Um, I actually took this on spring break and read it at the beach. So I already know it's like the perfect summer read because I like couldn't put it down while I was reading at the beach in the pool. It was so good. Oh my gosh. So this awesome. is about Emma Wheeler. She is this aspiring screenwriter, rom-com screenwriter, but she hasn't really been able to fulfill her dream of becoming a screenwriter because for the last 10 years, she's been taking, she's been the caretaker for her father. But then she gets this epic opportunity from her friend to work with a very famous screenwriter who is her hero on this rom-com. And she's going to work on it, but the rom-com is like terrible. You know, he's more known for like, you know, the sci-fi and Marvel, like those, you know, movies that we kind of love. But when it comes to rom-com, <laughs> he's like, doesn't know what the heck he's doing. So she goes to LA to hopefully help him on this screenplay. And it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Is it part of a series? I can't remember. And she doesn't really write in series. She doesn't does write she? in a series. Absolutely a standalone. You get cameos from 
a character that was in her release from two years ago, The Bodyguard. So there is a brief cameo from him. Not that you need to read The Bodyguard, but if you did, then you would like his little cameo. But, you know, summer again, it's a great time to watch, you know, summer romance movies, you know, rom-coms. And this is sort of like her, I think, love letter to the genre, like saying like, because Emma totally defends rom-coms and schools him on what's it about. So I really appreciated that part of the book. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I like that too. And you've got one more for us too. I do. And this one also comes out June 11th. There are a lot of summer romance books that come out on June 11th, by the way. I don't know what's so special about that today. Because it's my birthday. But <laughs> it's your birthday, oh, well, is you it? Go. For real? June, June, 11th. June 11th is my birthday. Oh and my uh, there are a lot of book releases that day. And I just want to say to the romance community, yeah. thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. We've got all your presents <laughs> covered because we're going to like – I need them all for you. (laughs) Right. What else would I need besides more (laughs) romance? This one I actually just finished too because I got an advanced reader copy of it. And it's, I have to talk about it because it's perfect for summer. It's called One Last Summer by Kate Spencer. This is her second romance. She, her debut novel was in a New York Minute, which was fantastic. But this one kind of takes you to Boston and then to the lakes of New Hampshire. What, because Clara, who is the heroine, she's sort of this woman and having like a midlife crisis. And she's forced to go on this like sabbatical or playcation for a week to, just to kind of get her head on straight and to get over her burnout. And so she goes up to this summer camp in New Hampshire where she went, attended as a kid And she reconnects with friends that she made there. But then they realize, oh, my gosh, the camp's being sold. And so she wants to recreate, like, all the fun that they had when they attended summer camp as kids. But one of the friends is a fella that she had a crush on when she was there as a kid. So they reconnect and shenanigans ensue. So, yeah. So for anyone who wants to, like, reminisce to the nostalgia of attending summer camp, you know, or just envisioning yourself in the beautiful lakes of New Hampshire over the summer, this would be a great one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That that sounds yeah. nice. What is the heat level on that one? How many chili peppers oh, are we Oh, gosh. Let me think. That one, I would say it's a little, it's maybe two or three chili peppers. You know, it's not nothing super graphic in terms of being five chili peppers, but definitely a little bit of steam, I would say. It's not totally closed door but lower on the scale. So I think I've given. And you said this, yeah. No, I was going to say one closed door, one sort of middle ground and one maybe a little steamy. (laughs) Yeah. You said this one was her second book. Is it like second in a series? Nope, totally independent. Or this is a standalone Mm -hmm. as well. So we don't have to read the first one, but we might want to. I think you should. It was really cute, especially if you like New York City. You know, I used to live in Boston. And so it was just really cool hearing her talk about the public gardens and, you know, different aspects of the city I could really picture and see. And even like going up to New Hampshire, which is really cool. So yeah, makes a great book. Oh, I love it. I love all yeah. of these rec- recommendations that you've got going on. And I love how they're over the spectrum as far as heat levels, because our audience, sometimes we like a sweet, sometimes we like a That's steamy. Right. So, And this would go. be for anyone who loves like friends to lovers romance, because well. Yeah, awesome. that's always so much fun. And, you know, childhood sort of friends now reconnecting. And you could tell that they had this spark. And and people who who love really good banter, too. Like, they're kind of like and the hero and heroine have this, like, really good antagonism to one another, which sort of sparks their chemistry, which is, which is always fun to read, too. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Well, you know, Leslie... This is your inaugural appearance (laughs) on here, but you know you're going to have to come back (laughs) because you are now, we have knighted you or whatever they say (laughs) as a nerdy romantic, you are official. I'm loving Uh these recommendations. And so, you know, I'm going to have to have you back. I would love it. I would love it. Absolutely. Jen, how about you? you? Now, you know, 
everybody knows on here that we can always depend on Jen <laughs> to give us a whole bunch of recommendations. <laughs> This time, y'all, though, she's given us some recommendations in different genres, and I didn't even think about this, but not everybody likes to read contemporary romance, which I happen to write and I happen to love reading, but we all like to read a few different things. And for me, I am actually getting into a little more of the nerdy side of romance, which means we're getting into things like paranormal, you know, sci-fi kind of romance, fantasy romance. And Jen, you've got a little bit of everything here to satisfy all of that. All right. I have you covered. I, I, I'm loving all of that. Now, Jen's got a list, y'all. Y'all be ready for this. What's first on your list? Okay. First on my list, for me... Summer is a time when I get a lot of books read. And so I wanted to make sure we had some bingeable options for everybody. <laughs> so my first recommendation in the paranormal world is a series called Frequency. It's called the Frequency Series by Lynn Lustig. It's four books. The series is complete. The whole thing plays out. Now, this is a true series. You're going to want to start with book one, and then you're just going to want to continue all the way through book four because a lot is happening in this world. This is an alternate universe type of a world. All kinds of stuff has gone down, so including a massive shift in the frequency of the earth. And what has happened as a result, speaking of nerdy, is that there are now people on the planet that have powers. And wow. what's great about the way that she did this with the powers is that the powers are all sort of relate to your emotional world. So it's not so much flying around as it is being able to control other, the emotions of, and in a way that other people feel. So we have, the first book is Gilded Lies. And in this book, we have our, our main hero is a very sexy movie star. And one of his superpowers is people feel very lustful around him. I know. I kind of think that there's a lot of maybe handsome movie stars that have this particular power about them, I'm right? I'm thinking so, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking... <laughs> we won't name so, names. Um, so he's that kind of a guy. <laughs> and he has this bodyguard that goes with him everywhere that is in love with him. And, but you know what? Our movie star guy is not out. So alongside the massive things that are happening in the world, we have a really wonderful love story between the two of them of getting to know each other and figuring out, you know, who is it that's important to you and what type of a statement do you want to make about this? And, and so that makes a really great story. But then we have in book two, we learn a little bit about this in book one, but in, in book two, I should have this in front of me. Book two, we have Copper Wrath. There's the story continues and and big things are happening in our world. By book three, Bronze Shame, we have uh, one of our heroines. Her superpower actually has to do with her blood. Her blood is able to heal people. And one of the massive corporations would really like to figure that out and really like to monetize that, of course. Of course. But they have not been able to, they're not able to figure that out. And so our... Our, our band of, of heroes has to try and figure out how to, how to keep her protected. And the science is like, the science is sciencing folks. So then by the end, we hit platinum death where everything in the world makes another shift. And we have, we have heroines that can speak, you know, telepathically. We have so much has happened. So you really want to start with book one on this one and read all the way through the frequency series. It's, it's a ride. It's, it's, there's gentle love stories in each of them really kind of following your heart and figuring out the people that you want to be around that you want to be with. Oh, what I meant to say, I think I skipped over Copper Wrath. The thing about book two is that our, is that our hero, our movie star hero in, in book one, he and the, the boyfriend are aware that he also has another love interest. And so we learn way more about her. And when I tell you how cool this lady is, 
she is someone that has an incredible talent. She's an actress. They're starring on Broadway together. And she has the power to see where your weaknesses are. Ooh. And so, oh yeah. So she is a force to be reckoned with when the big bad guys come after them. So really fantastic. So well put together. Such a really intricate and and wonderful world that Lynn Lustig has created here. So if you like to just immerse yourself in superhero stories, this is the one. Go for it. If you like... Uh, if you want a little bit of something a little softer in the superhero world, Alison Temple's book, My Not-So-Super Blind Date, is a, is a novella, and it has a really fantastic story with a sidekick. So our sidekick has kind of been going along in the world, and he ends up on a blind date with a henchman that works for the bad guy. And now... They are caught and they spend so much time together that they're trying to figure their way out of this time loop. Who created the time loop? What is happening? And so many good things happen in this book. So many good things. It is such a, it's a, a great love story about people that are uh, learning to trust each other and people that they cannot and should not be able to trust, but they stay side by side. This is not a super steamy book. The Frequency series, I don't think I mentioned that, is is there's a, like a tiny bit of steam, maybe like two chili pepper, three chili pepper kind of steam. And in my not so super blind date, like a two chili pepper scene. I think there's only one, okay. I think there's only one real love scene in there. Such great writing, so fun, and definitely a quick read. That is part of a, like a shared world series that has other authors, but the Allison Temple one is 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 a great one. So, oh, wow. highly recommend. Okay. Cool. And then sounds like, um, good, sounds like one for Doctor Who fans. They might <laughs> like that. A little Ooh. Bit. I think it may. I have more time. If we want to do a whole series, if we oh, want to do a whole episode boy. on time travel, I so got you on time travel. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So that will be the, our next episode. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. I have, I have one more paranormal sort of world to talk about. If anybody has been watching the Percy Jackson series that came out, it was so well done. It was such yes. a great thing to watch. And the Percy Jackson series for anybody that hasn't read it, that's a YA series that involves the Greek myths coming to life and being part of the contemporary world. Great book for kids, great series for kids on Disney. But if you like that stuff and want it to be a little more on the adult side, I got you. So this fantastic author, Maria Shield, has written a series. It's called The Order of Olympus. There's four books currently available. There, two of them are novels and two of them are novellas. So the novels, the novellas are standalones. You don't have to read anything. If you want to start small and just start with a novella, you can do Daring the Demigod is a Snowden book. So our hero and heroine are up in Alaska and they are Snowden, which I realize is maybe not exactly what you're looking for in the summertime. But when I tell you the heat, you the heat up for it. you'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is a great book between a son of Zeus and a daughter of Aphrodite. Good times are happening. So, wow. Then we have the other the other novella does take place in the summertime. We have we have an archaeologist who is exploring where myths supposedly took place and she's kind of gone in search of of these these locations and so she finds the rock where Prometheus was chained, right? And had his, his he brought fire to the right. humans. And well, she finds the rock and then Prometheus finds her. So <laughs> lots of good, wonderful things are happening there. We love that. So if you want to start, if you want to start short, the novellas are really great. The novels, the novels take place in the contemporary world, the kind of along the East Coast, like the Chesapeake Bay sort of area. So really lovely locations that are incorporated into the story and the first one is called holding out for a hero and you know i love me a song lyric so <laughs> we oh have boy. holding out for a hero 
which is one of the immortal warriors has escaped from Calypso. We love that for him and, and runs into a chef in modern day Chesapeake Bay. So we love that. And, and then we have, then a hero comes along again. We love a good song lyric. And in this one, we have one of the furies, Mm -hmm. one of the, the, the furies is loose in DC and our hero is like, oh, I need to be a part of this. So really great series, really well done. She does the mythology really well. And she also does, she does these love stories, just fantastic. Just really brings people together, incorporates the, the Greek gods here and there. And, and, and the, the two novels, like I said, those you, you, you don't have to read them in order, but they are connected. So. Okay. Those are yeah. great. That's what I was going to ask the way that you kind of talk about them the it, it seems like they're the two novellas are connected the two novels may be connected so the no? all four happen in the same world so it's all okay. like they're all sort of like leading to something but you don't have to read the novellas can be read in either order they don't connect okay. they're, they're not like dependent on each other in the storyline they happen it's two separate things that are happening separately if that makes okay. sense okay yes and then the 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 longer novels are they're more connected the two heroes know each other so they, they've been friends for a few thousand years. Okay. So. Okay. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a few I thousand love, years. I love the They're mythology angle. That's really cool. Oh yeah. She does such a great job with it too. Just, just really builds a world and builds characters that, that you feel like you just want to reach out and touch. They're just really wonderfully done. So that's Maria Shield and, and on a spice level, we'll, that will go a solid three, maybe four, depending on your, on, on how you feel about spice. But, but yeah, those are really great books. And again, cause there's four of them. You have a really nice bingeable <laughs> experience. There. Love it. Exactly. Love it. That's what summer is all about. Bingeable stuff. So, right. Yes. You get to the end of a book. You just want your Kindle, just download the next one. Let's Absolutely. go. Let's have it. Right. So, so give us more, give us more binge. More, more, stuff. more, more. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, let's do historical. I have a couple of contemporaries I want to talk about. So we'll, we'll do the historical first and then we'll come back around to the, to the contemporary. So it, I swear one of my absolute, absolute favorite books. This is not a brand new book. This book has been out for a year and a half. Okay. But never cross a Highlander by Lisa rain is, is, easily one of the very best historicals I have ever read. And so if you haven't read it yet, you are missing Mm -hmm. out. She has a way with language that is beautiful. She has the, she actually used to teach history and has this whole like historical research that she's done where she's gone real deep into, into real life, England and Scotland, and, and is able to sort of like pull these characters like straight out of the past and make them so alive and so real that uh, you cannot put it down. You cannot put this book down. Oh, wow. Um, we have a very sexy Highlander that is, he is at a castle to, for like a tournament type situation, but he has a secret. He has a secret. He frees slaves secretly and brings them to freedom. She is trying to escape the castle, but does not want to go with this guy because she has a <laughs> plan. And she's like, no, I have a plan. I know what I'm doing. And he's like, no, get in the cart. And so they start <laughs> off, they start off in this like enemy space of he messed up her escape and her ability to reconnect with her family because her, her clan was at the tournament as well. And she missed out on being able to connect with them because he insisted that she be quiet because he's trying to save other people. And so she ends up like completely off in the wrong direction and angry as all get out, but he needs to keep to his, he needs to keep to his plan. So the, the, the sparks are flying for sure at the beginning, but it is not a, it is not romantically. They are both very angry with each other. Spoiler they manage to get past. Of course, we hope that happens. Otherwise, <laughs> romance novel. You had me at Highlander. That's all I had um, to hear with Highlander. The romance. <laughs> yeah. right? right? Highlander, yes. Highlanders, don't worry. There's Highlanders. There's sword fights. There are there are kilts. There is, there is a waterfall. Oh. We're going to leave it at that. So 
Nice. Highly recommend this book. And like I said, this is one that that just takes just uses really beautiful language throughout. So so yeah, always hand always hand me a Lisa Rain book. Always. So that I I love that book. Okay, so if we want to think about contemporary, and I know Avon has a book two coming out. I do. We love a book two. We love <laughs> to like revisit a little bit about heroes and heroines that we've met in the past and like come into the the next story, how their friends are doing, how our loved ones are doing. And so one of my very favorites is called Full Moon Over Freedom. It's by Angelina M. Lopez. This is book two in her Milagro Street series. You don't have to read book one in order to understand book two. You certainly, you certainly should, because it's a great book and we've talked about it before. But in book two, we have a divorced heroine with two children who comes back to her family's house in Kansas and is, you know, trying to figure out life now that she's divorced her husband. And, and she's been kind of a high society mom while she was in, while she was married and, and really fit in that way. And she's in small town, Kansas now. So there's, there's no high society to be had. And she's trying to figure out like what she's going to do with her life. What role does she have? How does she want to raise her kids? All these kinds of big questions that somebody going through a major transition is, is happening. And one of the things that she is that she has really sort of disconnected from is her own internal magic. Ladies, we have an actual real bruja that in this story and I it, love takes, it. it takes the whole story to a different level of somebody who is not only trying to reconnect with who they are, reconnect with their family, reconnect with their culture, mm-hmm. and reconnect with this um, magical element that she has. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. But just to continue the reconnection you know, theme that we have running through here, she is out on out on a dark road, <laughs> one that is full of mystery and some backstory for her and who does she come across but her teenage crush of course not just crush (laughs) i should i should clarify not just crush but her first time her love her oh wow all all the big feelings yeah we have we have found him and what happens when she is like, oh, this is a sign. Oh, yeah, we're gonna like, we're gonna have a moment in this car. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna reconnect. And what does he say? I'm engaged. <gasps> no! Oh! I know. Don't I do know. this to us. I know. Rushing. Oh, oh. He he is a complicated <laughs> man. He is a complicated man that has a complicated <laughs> past. He is an artist, and he is, and he has come back. He is now like a like a famous, like a really famous artist. And he has come to town to do a mural in honor of this, of the historical for the historical uh, society. And, and he's very happy to do it. It just means that he's in town for a while. Oh, and man, oh, there's a lot that happens. There's a lot of history that those two need to cover Mm -hmm. together. So it is, it makes for a really fantastic read. And, and you just, you just want these two to be happy. So I love, yeah. I love her. Angelina is another recommended that. I love her writing, so I'll have to check it out. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh my gosh. I, I, she totally She agree. just has a way with words. Oh, amazing. Amazing writing. Yes. So, and very rich characters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, now that she has this magical right. level on, oh gosh, I've got to read this book. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Because, and of course, like, because it's a book too, we have to bring back the whole family. Of oh, course. Cool. All the cousins, <laughs> you know, Sunday dinner at grandma's that is complicated and fraught, of course. <laughs> so we love the family drama. We love the family dynamics. And, and we just love this, this whole theme of reconnection. Good things. Good, good things are happening. Yeah. Okay. So to continue the family theme, I have another bingeable, complete series for folks that is called Exposed Dreams. So this one is by Eva Moore, all four books, all done. This is about a family that has a, like a remodeling company and they get a deal 
with what we would recognize as HGTV, but she uses a different name for for it. And they're going to do a television show about these remodels that they're doing in Silicon Valley. And see, dad is the one that signed the contract and he springs it on the kids that work for the company, the the wife who thinks he was going to retire. He, she thought we were having a dad's going to retire dinner. And that's why it was so important for everyone to be here. No, it turns out dad signed a contract to do a television show oh without consulting with anybody who was going to be in the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this really hits the daughter, the oldest daughter. And she is, she's like, well, wait, have you, have we had a lawyer look at it? Have we reviewed this? Have we, this kind of stuff, right? She, this is a family that has experienced some tragedy. The, the oldest brother went into the military and, and died overseas. And so this is a family that has been grieving and hasn't figured out how to put themselves back together yet. And so a lot, when, when that happened, mom sort of extracted herself from everything the family was going through. And, and the daughter steps up, the daughter steps up. She takes over the whole office. She takes over so many things. And, and here she is just feeling completely overworked. And now they've got a television show and what am I supposed to do? And then the really fantastic manager, like head, like construction guy, construction head for the company, he sees her, he sees her in a way that nobody else sees her and helps her to see herself as someone that's, that's strong and takes very good care of her in all the wonderful ways. So we love that. We love a supportive guy. We love a guy that loves his family. Um, we love a guy that is, that's just really dang good at his job. So she, through this process, she kind of helps her, she gets herself to sort of be like, you know what? I want to be in charge of all the design because that's what she went to college for. And, and she makes it happen. She makes so many things happen. And, you know, our guy has, you know, he has a complicated family as well, but together they are just going to be thrilled. All, all the good things happen. And we love that for them. We really love that for them. Book two and three sort of cover the other siblings and, and we have, we have a wonderful gray sweatpants scene. If anybody's into those and. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. Um, Eva definitely, Eva more definitely <laughs> writes on the spicier side. So we're looking at, you know, in that three to four chili pepper sort of range. She, she writes wonderful family dynamics, really a lot of complications within the family and in terms of, of who they are and what they want. And then book four throughout kind of the overarching, you know, like storyline through the the whole thing is, is the fact that, that the, the patriarch, the father of the family has been, has not retired the way he promised his wife that he would retire. He is making decisions that impact everyone and not communicating in the way that he should communicate. So book four talks about, it is really all about the way that their marriage is dissolving in front of your eyes. So you get a little bit of story kind of revisiting some of the previous books where you saw them arguing or you saw mom not exactly dating somebody else, but definitely spending time with another man. Oh, wow. And, but we get her perspective on it. We get to see yeah. what mom was thinking through all of this. So we have a marriage and trouble theme that's sort of like going on in the background of the, of the first three books. And then book four kind of covers what happens with the parents mm -hmm. and, and whether or not they get a happily ever after at the end. Mm -hmm. So we love that for them. But the, the first three books are, are the adult, are the adult kids, which is really fun. So it sounds like for this one, we sh probably should read these in order. Yeah. At least to get yeah. that overarching mm -hmm. that's going to exactly to get that overarching kind of storyline. It's, it's nice to read them in order, not mandatory, but it's nice. If you're going to sit on a beach and binge a whole series, yeah. this is a really good one to do. Okay. They incorporate some fun stuff with, with the, the television show and some behind the scenes stuff. So that's really fun. And, and just generally having a really good time. Um, in a story. So Eva has quite a few books out, but, but that's a really great series to, yeah. to 
uh, start off with for her. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. You know, this is bringing in, of course, my weekend DIY girl side. <laughs> right. You know, she she watches all. The- I know, right? <laughs> yes. yes. She watches all the HGTV shows, so I'm like, ooh, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, read a little, fix a little, have a little fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm liking all of this. Oh, yeah. Well, I know we've been teasing it so much throughout, but yes, I do have something coming out as well over the summer. And as I actually thought about this and looked at this and realized, hey, I need to change the date that it actually comes out. I've also realized that there are a couple other books that I'm recommending that are coming out on the same day as mine. <laughs> How about that? So that's um, a great thing. You know, yeah. the more the merrier. <laughs> that's that's what I say. So I'm actually reading it now because they just sent out the arcs and and I am going to have this author on for next month's podcast episode. And I've been talking about this for a while. Her name is Geneva Lee and she is writing her she is writing her fourth wing, like oh. book, her romanticy mm-hmm. book. Ooh, yes. I love her. Yeah. So um, the book, yeah, the book's called Filthy Rich Faith. Ah, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. So it is <laughs> my first foray into romanticy, actually. I have, I have not gotten into the whole fourth wing, all mm-hmm. of that stuff going on. I haven't gotten into that yet. I am actually entering the romanticy genre through this book. And in kind of preparing and kind of waiting for the art to come out, I did read Filthy Rich Vampire, which this, she says, this is kind of a companion series. It's not in the same, it's not the same, it's not going to be like continuing. This is more like a companion type series. I've only read through book one of that series. I think there's four in the series. I'm halfway through book two, but book one, Filthy Rich Vampire, um, is a dark paranormal romance. So she does have trigger warnings for this. So, you know, everybody that has issues with violence, then, I mean, it's vampire jump. Um, <laughs> and, they're, and they're not, you know, cute, sparkly vampires. Mm. Um, another reason to love it. No, that was me. Are so spice, spicy? Yes, her books are spicy. The a Filthy Rich Vampire, however, though, was a slow burn. Because the heroine was, the heroine was a, uh, the heroine is a virgin and there is an issue there with vampires and virgins that I'm not going to spoil. So it is a serious slow burn, but everything that could happen on page happened on page. We'll just say one that. click. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, in one... she's also in KU. Oh, too, perfect. So, you know, it's, it's like, oh my no brainer. You know, you're just making it too you're right. She's just making it mm-hmm. too easy. So Filthy Rich Faye is about Kate Holloway is set in New Orleans. Kate Holloway, she is a nurse at a New Orleans hospital, and she has a brother who likes to get into some shenanigans, and, you know, it's kind of like shenanigans that, you know, we need to get godfathers involved and underworld kinds of things going on. It's like, oh, why did we get into this kind of thing? And so... He actually comes into the hospital one day. He's rolled into the hospital. This is not spoiled. This is the very first chapter, by the way, y'all. So I have just read I have just read the first chapter. <laughs> I've just gotten this book yesterday and I'm already like, oh my gosh, when am I gonna get be able to get back to this book? So he has just been rolled into the hospital. He's 
had a gunshot wound. It's not fatal. It's not anything like that. But we know that he is in with a big time kind of mafia-like family that rules over New Orleans underworld or other world, as we will find out. And this big mafia family, the head of it is a guy named Lachlan Gage. And even though we're supposed to stay away from Lachlan Gage, Kate has to go to Lachlan Gage because (laughs) she wants to get her brother out of this mafia-like gang kind of thing that Mm -hmm. that he's in. And of course, he says... Yeah, you can, he can get out if you trade your oh. life for oh. his life. So she kind of gets tricked into being bonded to him or by, you know, getting bound to him. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't know this, but Lachlan Gage is not just a mafia guy. He's actually a fey prince. So that's where our fey comes in. That's where, yeah, all of our fairy goodness comes in there. It's, it's you know, it's dark. It's probably going to be pretty steamy. I do not know if this one is a slow burn. I'm not that far into it yet, but knowing But from reading Filthy Rich Vampire, even if it is a slow burn, it's not going to be lacking for wonderfully open door scenes (laughs) of some sort. We're going. There's going to be some playing around happening. Yeah, um, everybody gets to have fun. (laughs) That's right. Everybody gets to have fun. However, again, warnings with this one as well. She gives, Geneva Lee gives a warning of, you know, obviously there's violence going on. There's a little bit of con kind of things going on. I mean, obviously, as you can probably tell, if she's getting tricked into being in this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might, there might be some consent issues going on here. There's some backstory of some, of some violence and possibly of some genocide, some things like that. So there are, this is dark romance, people. This is not Warning. our fun rom-coms <laughs> that we usually talk about, right? Warning, warning, yeah. Uh, <laughs> danger, Will Ross. Okay, so anyway, had to have a little nerdy in there somewhere. So anyway, this one is coming out on June 25th, which is the exact same day that the accidental proposal by yours truly is coming out june 25th as well i i wanted it to come out june 11th i'm sorry jan i couldn't i can't make that happen <laughs> I, please okay. don't be disappointed you know what? here's the thing i'm actually gonna be out of town on my birthday and so I, I have like a ton of travel in june so i will be back in my own house on my own couch on june 25th so I will be very much looking forward for that to download to my Kindle. And and we can just kind of spend a couple of days hanging out together. Yay! I love, it. I I love this too. I love yeah. this so much. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited already. See, I was a little bit petrified because I still have one major edit to do. My editor was like, you got to make this just a little bit better than what it is right now. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. You can do it. But but it is actually the ebook is actually on pre-order right now as we're recording. The paperback will be on pre-order probably when this comes out because that is literally what I'm working on right now. And it is book two of the Accidental Lover series. It, Love it. It is the Accidental Lover series is a is going to be well, it's really going to be a trilogy at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, the trilogy is one that you do have to read in order. Yes, you will be able to read book two without book one, but you may feel like you're missing something. 
So reading the accidental swipe first is probably going to be the best bet there. But the accidental proposal follows the same couple from the accidental swipe, Jason Reed and Fortune Edwards. And Jason and Fortune are obviously now together. And they've been together for a few months. And they've kind of been hiding the fact that they are together from Jason's friends. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if you read book one, you'll know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jason's friends, the ones that Fortune have met, she didn't meet them on very good terms. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> she didn't make a great impression there. So they've been kind of dreading this. But finally, they decide, yeah, they're going to have to do this because Jason's been called out by a friend. And so what ends up happening is Jason feels like the best way that they kind of can come together and meet each other and get to know each other is by having a series of group dates. <laughs> so his friends and her friends are going to go on a series of wonderful group dates to try to maybe bring the friends together because Jason has already realized this is the woman for him and he wants to be with her and he is done looking. So he Love needs this that. to work. Yeah. And so, you know, it's things, there's shenanigans. There's a lot of things going on, but one major thing that doesn't seem to be working out is Jason's friend, Seth. Jason's friend, Seth, does not like Fortune at all and has a major problem with her and basically does not see Jason with Fortune. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to kind of break them up. And Jason has to choose because Fortune is like, mm -mm, no. You're either going to have to choose between Seth and me. If you want to have a continuing friendship with Seth, then I can't be in this picture because we are not going to get along. Jason wants them to get along. Fortune says no way. And so he has to figure out his choice. He has to make a choice. There's always consequences to a choice, especially when it's between a friend and possibly the love of your life. And so a lot of things are going to go on there. This one, you know, it's, it's a rom-com. Yes. And it is a little lighter than I thought it was going to be, but it does. I do have a few trigger warnings here. There is microaggressions in here. There is some outright racism. There, there are some violence issues as well. And, and so trigger warning, content warning there, but it's, right. it's not dark, but it is not fluffy. <laughs> Let's just say it's, it's a lot of reality here. Yeah. Yeah unfortunately, which is what happens. But if but we you love that about your writing, we oh, love that you, you that you bring the, the, the realness to, to your stories. We love that about, about you. So it's okay that it's not all like, you know, fluffy, you know, we want the <laughs> we want the real deal, babe. We want that real deal and you do it so well. So Thank you. I'm excited to read this one. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm, ex finished. I'm excited oh for it to come out. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I'm like, I can't wait for it to come out. And I'm at that fun part where, you know, you're for a self-published author and a person who loves marketing. I am the, I'm getting the marketing pieces together. I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know formatting, book formatting, there's colors, there's fun stuff happening. I, you know, it, it just feels like it's, you know, almost about to happen here. You know, it's not just, just words on a page. It's, it's a, it's a world coming together. And I, I kind of like that. I, I think that's kind of cool, but I'm glad that I'm glad that you like the realness because this one is bringing the realness. And this is Jason's book. So we get to see a lot of Jason's life. 
and he is a construction manager in Charlotte. So, you know, <laughs> it's a lot going on there. So we get him, we get to see him, you know, swing a sledge. <laughs> yeah. That's that's always Perfect. good. <laughs> I'm an yeah, HGTV yeah. junkie. What can what can I say? I mean, <laughs> oh gosh. But for this one, as far as spice level goes, it's pretty much like the last one. I'm gonna give this one what three chili peppers? Okay, three chili peppers. All right, all right. We we'll give it three. Yeah. <laughs> In other I mean, words, I, I, I read this one, so I don't know. They weren't together when in the first book, so we we got the we got the chili peppers like part way through. So <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah yeah. We, it's all the way through. <laughs> all right, it sounds like we're going from two chili peppers to three chili peppers. Yeah, yeah, it got right. right. <laughs> this one is this one is straight three chili peppers. Yeah, the, there you yeah. go. It's, it's all the way through. But, you know, I'm not one to be, you know, very graphic with anything or any, I'm, I'm no Tessa Bailey. <laughs> You're not going to, it's not going to get crazy like that. I, I, I don't curse very often. And even if I do, it's mild. It's not anything that you, you know, can't say in front of, well, I, I shouldn't say that anyway, but, you know, it's, it, it you know, and I'm not, with this particular book, I'm not really, it's not really trope heavy. We do have the touch her and die trope. Uh, Cause Jason's got, he, he's got issues and it's more so of like character kind of tropes. You know, I love my cinnamon roll heroes and Jason is that my heroine is plus size and we've got some of course disastrous group dates going on but one thing that i have started to i guess we're kind of going towards the realness part of it is i've started to bring in more mental health representation um and showing that it's okay to go to therapy oh, yeah. you know Good. kind of thing because i think we really need that right yeah now. we do yeah, yeah, we I do. appreciate that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, June 25th, The Accidental Proposal. And one last book that is going to be an honorable mention because I have not yet gotten into the loveliness that is this series. My um host for my launch party for accidental for the accidental swipe also has a book coming out on June 25th. It's called The Wedding Crush, and it's by Mia Heintzelman. And she was my- Oh, um, that's fantastic. Yes. And I didn't realize her book was also coming out on June 25th, so I hope she's okay with this. But like I said, you know, like you say, the more the merrier. That's, that's how yeah. I feel. Um, I mean, I went, once, I click, once I click the presale button, I mean, I've got that book and, and heaven's Betsy, do I have enough books on my, in my library? No, I do not. Never enough. No, I do not. So yeah. Right. There's still room for more. Good to know that Mia has a book coming out too that day and I can go buy that one. Like all in one fell swoop. Good for me. All right, nerdy romantics. Listen, sometimes I get a little bit too excited about romance novels coming out, especially romance novels by people who I know. I mean, I really get excited about these things. So I did mention that Mia Heintzelman's The Wedding Crush is coming out on June 25th. That is incorrect. Mia Heintzelman's The Wedding Crush is coming out on June 11th, which is when all those other books are coming out. And it just happens to be Jen's birthday, as she said. Who knew? Um, but I wanted to make sure that I correct that error so that you can go out and get Mia's book the minute that it drops, June 11th of 2024. Go out and get it. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, her book, The Wedding Crush, is also a book, too, of this particular series that she's doing. And this series is about basically wine o winery owners in Napa Valley. Oh. So I 
am I'm loving that because I'm I'm just I'm loving all the feels with that that that's just all the feels uh, yes mm-hmm. uh, it, it's just all good so I I wanted to make sure that I mentioned her but I haven't gotten into that book yet mm-hmm. I'm just anticipating it but I'm sure it's going to be a good one because hers are hers are pretty awesome as well so yeah and I'm loving her Instagram <laughs> right. I think it's her TikTok and Instagram. Her TikTok and her Instagram is, yeah, with that book is with the whole series. It's just it's just been fun. So I know mm-hmm. these are going to be fun books. So fantastic, yeah. But y'all, this has been great. It has been so fun hanging out and talking romance books with you, ladies. Thank you love for this. helping me my fill out my thing TBR list even more. I love it. Yeah. I know this is this is so awesome. And you know, both of y'all are gonna have to come back because this is just summer. You know, we're gonna have to talk about, you know, fall. Jen, she's already she's already hooked me with some time travel romances. Oh my god. Time travel books in general. Yeah. Just, we'll do just, holiday. Yeah. We'll do holiday All romances books. next or something. Yeah. I love this. I yes. am loving this. Yes. We are down for that. Everybody look forward for that. <laughs> Leslie has spoken. Oh, gosh. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here Thank with me. Thank you. And congrats on early book release Anytime. for you. That's awesome. Oh, mm-hmm. thank you so much. <laughs> always, always love to chat with you, hon. I'm so excited to read your next book. So thank you. While that's the end of our discussion, it's not the end of the story check out my website at nerdyromanticspodcast.com. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter to get show notes of the episodes in your inbox. And if you want to see me, my guests, and my guest co-hosts on video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash at symbol author Y.M. Nelson. Thanks for listening and for watching.